everyone, it's Jana. I have talked about my emetophobia here on my channel before, but I've never really made a video about what it is. And understandably so, I get that question a lot, so I thought it would be good to sit down and make a video for people that might not know what it is. So I have emetophobia, I have struggled with it since 2012, so for six years. And over the course of those years, I've continued to get a little bit better, but it's still something that I have to work through almost every day, if not every day. <laughs> it's something that I'm open to talking about, I'm okay with talking about it, and I like answering questions and being able to help people out there that have it or want to help someone else that has it. I am not a mental health professional, I am just an everyday person that struggles with this phobia, so I don't really have like any medical or technical terms for you to define the phobia. I'm kind of just going to describe it as I experience it. I do just want to say that if you have the phobia, I will be using some potentially triggering language in this video. I just want you to know ahead of time so that you can decide if you want to continue watching it or if you want to click off. I'm not going to go too graphic or anything like that, but I have to use some of the words to be able to explain what the phobia is. Okay, so what is emetophobia? Emetophobia is the fear of throwing up or things related to it. It's basically an overarching fear of all things related to throwing up. Everyone experiences it differently. So no two people with the phobia will experience it in exactly the same way or feel affected by it in the same ways. There is no right way to have emetophobia. Everyone's different. <laughs> so some people are afraid of themselves getting sick. Some people are afraid of seeing others getting sick. Some people are afraid of both. And it's so much broader than that. People will have trouble eating out because they didn't prepare the food themselves and they don't know if it's safe. Some people will become vegetarians because they're afraid of foodborne illnesses due to meat. Some people can even develop agoraphobia. A lot of it revolves around like avoidance, avoiding places that could potentially make them sick or avoiding places where they might see someone else get sick. It's particularly hard because getting sick isn't really something you can control. And that's something a lot of people with emetophobia struggle with, the not knowing and the loss of control. It can be particularly hard during flu season, especially with a lot of people on social media posting about a bug going around. I know that that has been hard for me in the past, like seeing things on Facebook or on Twitter or on Instagram of other people, even if they're in London and I'm here in the USA, I get nervous when I see something that says a bug is going around. So we're entering October right now and we're entering flu season and this time period can be especially hard for people with emetophobia. It's also hard because a lot of television shows, movies, books, even music can have triggers in them. I started a site that I will link below where I warn people about movies. I will watch movies and have friends watch movies and designate them as safe or unsafe for emetophobics and it's just like a small thing but it means a lot. For example, if I go into a movie and I have no clue if there will be a trigger in it or not, the whole time that's what I'm thinking about. But if I go in knowing what to expect, I'm able to be like, okay, so the trigger happens here, just be ready for that and be on the lookout for that, or there are no triggers, just enjoy the movie. Something that's really hard about emetophobia is that it's a phobia and it causes anxiety and panic symptoms in a lot of people. And with those symptoms, they can feel nauseous, and then that's just starting a whole big cycle. You're anxious, you feel nauseous, you think you're sick, you're anxious, you feel nauseous, you think you're sick, and it's just like a constant circle, and it's really difficult. The phobia can just pop up and affect the most unexpected places in your life, and that's a really hard thing. Like I said, emetophobia is different for everyone, so some of these struggles people might not have at all, and some of them they might have really badly. So if you know someone with emetophobia, it's important to talk to them and gauge how they're feeling and gauge their comfort levels. I think it's good to open a conversation about it because it's actually pretty common. A lot more common than I used to think it was. I used to feel pretty alone in the phobia but since I've opened up more on the internet I've met so many people that also struggle with the phobia. So chances are someone in your life could be struggling with it. It's also important to point out that nobody likes getting sick. So there's a difference between like just not liking it and being grossed out by it and actually fearing it. The fear takes over a lot of different parts of your life. 
You can start to avoid restaurants, public restrooms, certain foods, certain drinks. Avoiding foods because of expiration dates or being close to expiration dates. You can check your temperature excessively or ask other people to feel your forehead. You can wash your hands a lot. You can avoid shaking hands with other people or coming in contact with people that you don't know that well. You can find yourself checking other people for signs of illnesses. It's a lot and it's all consuming and it's difficult. It's very different from just not liking getting sick or thinking it's gross or just not wanting to be sick. It's so much more than that. It is so much harder than that. So if someone in your life has a metaphobia, try to be understanding. Try to do some research on it. Listen to them. That is so important. And just be a friend. The more people out there that learn about the phobia and understand the phobia, the better. Listening and talking about it and understanding it are important steps to take. There are such small ways that you can help, like helping me screen movies. If you see a movie, use the contact page on my Emetophobia website and just let me know if it was safe or not. That is such a small way that you can contribute. Also just being aware of the language you use. A lot of people think making jokes about getting sick are funny. They're not. They're gross at the very least. And they're triggering at the most. And I just think we don't really need that. Just little things like that can help you and also help out those of us that are struggling. The fact that you're even watching this video and even getting any information from it is really helpful and I'm very thankful. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have some more questions, please leave them in the comments and I will try to get to them. I love you all. Stay beautiful, you people. Bye!